Hello everybody, uh, thank you so much Northern California uh, Botanist Society for having me today. I'm super excited to uh, talk and share uh, about research that I did in conjunction with uh, Dr. Barbara Wilson on Lomatium. So I'm going to be talking about discoveries in the Lomatium Crufolium group. And these are some pictures of members in that group. So the Lomatium crufolium group uh, consists of about 10 different species of plants. Um, and there's about 100 species of Lomatium. So it's about one tenth of the genus. And nine tenths, um, nine of these plants are endemic to Northern California. So a huge percentage of them grow in this region. And to our surprise, uh, the Lomatium crufolium group is actually a polyphyletic group. This was very surprising because they look very, very similar. And they are actually, there's two lineages and they're very distantly related. Oh, and then this is also just a fun, uh, a fun little comic. I don't know if you guys can see it because it's so small, but like this is an example of like what your family tree is not, and then like this is actually your family tree, and then like you know this is not how evolution works. Uh, this is how evolution works. Yeah. And so here is a phylogenetic tree of several different Lomatium taxa, and as you guys can see here on the top, you have lineage one in a Lomatium crufolium group, and then you have Lomatium two. Um, the first, lo the first lineage consists of Lomatium crufolium, Lomatium marginatum, and Lomatium tracei. And then the second group consists of um, Lomatium cogolitini, uh, Lomatium congonii, and Lomatium anglomanii. Oh yeah, so like this was very surprising. <clears throat> because... They really do look super similar, but once we um, looked a little further, we made some, um, we noticed some very different morphological characters. So in the first lineage, we noticed that um, most of the groups have obovate bracklets. So they have really wide bracklets. Um, and then obviously there's an exception. Um, their Lomatium marginatum can have linear bracklets, but it can have a wide spectrum of uh, bracklet shapes. And then there's also some petal color variability, but that's mostly seen in Lomatium marginatum. And then in the second lineage, you typically have bracklets that are completely absent. And um, that could be a, a result of like several different things. Um, most of the plants in um, lineage two are strict serpentine endemics, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. So just as a brush up on um, APACE um, uh, characters, <laughs> you've got the penuncle, and then you've got the bracts, and the bracts attend the rays, and then um, at the top of the rays you've got bracklets, and those subtend the flowers. And so I'm going to be talking about uh, the, the brackets over here. So uh, I'm going to show you guys some pictures of members of the first lineage. So this is Lomatium crufolium. Um, they are really pretty. Uh, Lomatium crufolium only has yellow petals. Um, and then you can see, based on these pictures, these really wide Bracklets, and that is something that's diagnostic of all uh, Lomatium crufolium throughout its range. And um, I call it the Lomatium crufolium group because Lomatium crufolium has the widest distribution among any of these taxa. It grows from Northern California all the way to Southern California um, on the Channel Islands. So it's got a pretty big distribution. And then there's another picture of, you can see the really wide bracklets and some nice ants hanging out. And then we have Mar Lomatium marginatum. And uh, Lomatium marginatum is the most plastic of any of the taxa in this lineage. It can have purple petals, it can have white petals, it can have yellow petals. 
It can also have really long ultimate leaf segments, um, as you can see right over here, or they can be really, they can be shorter. And then you can see here, uh, these, this is an example of a lomation marginatum with really wide brackets. So again, that trait that is common within this lineage. And then you have lomation tracei. Uh, lomation tracei is a much less robust member in this group. And uh, it also has uh, obovate bracklets, so they are they're pretty wide. I don't have any pictures of the bracklets, um, um, but you can see, you can hardly see, there's not many pictures of Lomation tracei, and there's actually a lot of confusion behind this species, because in the Jepson, it says that this plant has yellow petals, and that is not true. <laughs> they have white petals. Um, it's possible that uh, populations of this species uh, have yellow petals in Humboldt County because I haven't been there and seen any of the plants there. But um, um, it's really bizarre because the species description says that this plant has yellow petals, but all of the populations that I visited distinctly have white petals. So it's really, really bizarre. And I would bet that the ones in uh, Humboldt County also have white petals. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about the second lineage, and they are um, uh, diagnostic for having no bracklets, or if they are present, then they're linear and they're um, hardly, hardly visible. So this is Lomatium anglomanii. It's super pretty. Um, it's got white petals and purple anthers. And this plant grows in um, serpentine soils in far northern California in the Shasta Trinity. Um, and then you have Lomatium congonii. Um, we were really surprised that Lomatium congonii and Engelmanii um, lumped together in the same clade because Lomatium congonii grows at the base of Yosemite, and so it's like super disjunct from Lomatia Mangomania. And it's also, you can see that they are, uh, that these guys have yellow petals, uh, whereas the, the previous Lomatia Mangomania has white petals and purple anthers. So this is a distribution map of Lomatia Congonia on Calflora. There are some things that are wrong with this map. Um, uh, when Barb and I, um, when we were looking at the, the different Lomatium in Northern California, we were looking at Lomatium congonii, um, which grows right over here. And then we were also looking at Anglomania, which grows there. And then we were looking at some of the annotated specimen that grow there. And we noticed some, um, some unique differences in the, the plants that had been annotated um, Lomatium, Anglomania, Lomatium congonii here. So this little population of plants has been called three different species of plants. Um, and so we, we took a closer look at those plants in the herbarium, and we found some pretty cool, cool things. So, um, as I was saying, uh, Lomatia congonii grows at the base of the uh, of Yosemite, at uh, the base of the Sierras. Um, and then Lomatia anglomania is over here. It actually has two um, <coughs> disjunct uh, populations, one in California and one in Oregon. But they both have white petals, and we actually have done DNA on the plants in Oregon, but um, that they look very similar. And then um, this group of plants that is like the diamonds, and it's sort of like scattered, looks like ants probably to you guys, because it's sort of far from the screen. Um, but the little black specks, um, that is Lomatia tracei. And from what we learned in the DNA, Lomatia tracei is very distantly related to these plants right over here. Um, and it's funny because we thought that tracei would be more closely related to this plant 
But actually, all of the little circles that have the colors are, that's the second lineage. And so they're all completely allopatric. And they all are strict serpentine endemics. So um, the plant that is in the purple, um, we describe it as Lomatium Congo litany. And it is similar to Lomatium congonii in having um, white and yellow, yellow petals. It's got yellow petals just like Lomatium congonii. Um, and it differs from Lomatium anglomanii in Lomatium anglomanii having uh, white petals. And um, the, the leaves also look fairly different between all of the plants. And then here's an example of um, the difference between the sister taxa. So Lomatium congo uh, litany is most closely related to Congdonii, um, which is really surprising because they are the furthest apart from each other um, from any of the plants that we suspected it would be most closely related to. So uh, you can see here um, Lomatium congo litany has really bright green leaves, and then Lomatium congdonii has gray green leaves. And then here's a, like a leaf comparison. It may be difficult to see, but um, this is a leaf of Lomatium tracii compared to a leaf of Lomatium congo litany. And then these are the two plants. I thought that these would be the sister taxa, so I was pretty blown away when we got the DNA results back. And once we dug a little further, we found out that geology really does rock. Um, so, uh, Lomatium Cabo Litany grows on Red Mountain in California, and it's basically a serpentine island. Um, it is surrounded by sedimentary soils, and so there's no, um, none of the plants that grow on Red Mountain grow anywhere near there because they're completely geologically separated from other populations. And so um, they're totally isolated and um, it would be really curious to see, here's a, a bit of a confusing um, distribution map. This is a distribution map of the geologic zones of Northern California. Once I found out that ArcGIS had something like this, I was super excited because um, you can learn a lot from the map, and I, I don't know much about soils um, or about geologic zones, but I did end up learning um, a lot more from just reading um, information on their, on their website. So Red Mountain is about over here, and it's that dark green, if you guys can see it, and all of this like lime green, this like mint ice cream green, this is all sedimentary, this is all a sedimentary rock geologic zone. And so it's, um, it's separating the population of plants that's on Red Mountain from um, its closest relative, which is like up here in the pink. And then Lomatium tracii, which is very distantly related, grows below here. And so Lomatium cago litany, um, its common name is, is Wailaki Lomatium. And um, that is because it grows in Wailaki territory. These are the native nations of what is considered California. And Red Mountain grows in the westernmost portion of Wailaki territory, right there. And um, Kago Litany, um, the, the plant was named by someone who is Wailaki, and the name means daylight coming. And this brings me to my next point. Um, so there is definitely colonialism in botanical nomenclature, and it is a contemporary issue, and it's something that is definitely apparent in the genus of Lomatium. About 32 species of Lomatium are culturally significant food and or medicine plants to native peoples. And um, many of them, many new species quote unquote, and I, I like to say that because it's, they're new to whom? Many of these plants already have names, and um, many of the, the, the foods and the medicines are living traditions within those cultures. And so when um, people 
name a new plant, it's not, it's not new to humanity necessarily. And um, even though so much, um, many things have been lost, there are living traditions and native peoples throughout Western North America um, use many of these plants. <clears throat> and to give an example of how extensive many of these uses are, Lomatia macrocarpum is a hugely culturally significant food and medicine plant, and it has a name in it, at the very least, 14 different indigenous languages. <clears throat> There's tons of different species of Lomatia that are like this. There's Lomatia nudicali, Lomatia um, uh, multiphonum, Lomatia utriculatum, um, and I use Lomatia macrocarpum as an example because this is one that will likely be split in the near future, and it would behoove splitters to reach out to the indigenous communities and ask if they would be, like to be involved in the naming process, um, because many of these plants already have names. And um, this is one that's also used locally. The Kashaya Pomo used this plant as a food plant in the spring. So what can we do to learn more? Um, my recommendation is if you do suspect that there is a new species of plant, you reach out to the native community because they may have much to teach you about that plant or would like to be, or would potentially like to be involved in the naming process. Collaboration. This whole project, this research that I did last year with BARC could not have been done without collaboration with um, tons of different people. Um, and so I'm really grateful for that. So yeah, geologic, botanic, indigenous knowledge collaboration um, is something that is really important. And um, consider the significance of geologic zone differences with regard to speciation. I was really surprised about how the different geo geologic zones um, influence or potentially influence a lot of the speciation in this group. And I'd like to give special thanks to uh, Barb, uh, Jennifer Wheeler, Redbird, also known as Edward Willie, uh, Nick Odding, James Smith, Jim Smith, Alvin Lamb, um, Haley Hargrave, I forgot to put her name in there, um, Julie Nelson, and with deep appreciation to the indigenous peoples of Northern California whose stewardship and land management practices have sustained and promoted and fostered um, the biodiversity of what is considered Northern California. So questions?